Well, good afternoon. This is Bob Allen at KDTV.com in our studios at FoodShare. And this is another installment of our Meet the Candidate series, where we are inviting candidates from public office in Ventura County to please come and join us in a little studio setting where we get a chance to uh, let the uh, electorate know who you are. And today, we're real happy to have Richard Carrillo yep. running for... City Council in Port Wainimi. Richard, welcome to our studio. Well, thank you. And uh, we always like to start by uh, getting a little of the background. So share with our viewers, where were you uh, born? Where were you brought up? Uh, the early part of your life. Well, I was, I was brought up in a, a small town, uh, Calexico, California, a border town, 120 miles east on the border. Uh, the city across the uh, from Calexico is Mexicali, which is the capital of uh, Baja, California. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a bachelor's degree, I have a master's degree in criminal justice administration that I obtained in San Jose State University. I have a bachelor's degree in criminal justice administration, San Diego State University. Well, before, before we get into the, uh, ed the, the upper education, uh, did you grow up in uh, and went to school down in uh, Calexico? Calexico. Yes. Yes, graduated. I went through the whole system and collection. And you had a family down there that uh, you had indicated was uh, pretty active in uh, government and politics. Yes, I was raised in a political, I call a political family. At one time, uh, at one time, uh, I had an uncle that was a board of supervisors. I had an uncle that was on the city council. I had an uncle on the board of education. I had an uncle that sat on the board of uh, the Imperial Irrigation District. Uh, and I also had an uncle who was a postmaster, and that's a political appointee. At one time, was a political appointee. And you, you had shared with me before we went on the air uh, that basically you would be going around to all the barbecues. So early in your life, you got a little bit accustomed to the uh, system of politics. Yes, it kind of rubbed off. <laughs> kind of rubbed off. And then, uh, as you uh, started your high, after high school, uh, I think you shared with me that uh, you went to San Diego State first. Yes, I went. Uh, I went to Imperial Valley College, okay. which is a local junior college, and then I went to San Diego State. And I was of good fortune to have San Diego State uh, campus uh, in Calexico. There's a campus uh, wow. in Calexico, and it was in walking distance of my house. So wow. I've saved a lot of money uh, there. So you got a real opportunity to have an education uh, that most kids uh, might not be able to have. Yes, and then uh, you went up to San Diego. Uh, state and uh, share with us it was quite an experience as you mentioned to me uh, not only going to school but all the outside activities that you did to work your way through uh, San Diego State well I'm sorry yeah, San Jose San State, Jose state. San, San Jose, okay uh, when I graduated from high school in 1974 uh, prior to that in somewhere between 1970 to 1974 I had a conversation my mother wanted me to be a lawyer or a doctor and, and was promoting college and I, I wanted to go to college. However, I was, uh, you know, a youngster, and I was going, well, I want to be a policeman. <laughs> and yeah, as you recall, those were the turbulent years, uh, all the way to, to um, and, and law enforcement actually became a profession, in the sense, in those years. Um, and I don't know why, but I, it was a, a something I wanted to do. And as we're all told, if you want to succeed in life, do what you want to do. So when the opportunity came. In 1974, I was looking for a job to finance my uh, junior college. And I was walking through downtown, and I ran into a, a police officer who was walking a footbeat. And in those days, you walk footbeats. And uh, he saw me walking around with applications for a job. And, I had, you know, they, and he looked at me and he goes, hey, uh, would you be interested in working with us? We have, uh, they were called auxiliary police officers. Uh, they would work foot patrol along with him. Uh, we had a uh, limited peace officer authority. We were not armed, but, but uh, depending on what part of the department you worked in, you could be armed. Uh, for example, they had a burglary patrol. When I worked there, I was armed. Um, uh, a jailer, I was a jailer, a radio dispatcher, um, and as what, and then, then um, we did uh, traffic control. And, and the city of Calexico, I don't know if you've ever been there, during certain times of the year, uh, traffic can back up to roughly 12 miles out of the city. And Calexico, at the time I was there, was one mile square, 12,000 people, roughly. 
it's now 24,000 people. And the reason I mentioned that is Port Wayne is roughly 25,000 people. And the same population size. And uh, when I saw Port Wayne uh, that was one of the, it's like home. It's uh, agriculture, it's a port. <laughs> and, and we had a port of entry there, we have a port here. Uh, law enforcement, uh, again, uh, I worked here. Oh, anyways, I'm going ahead of myself, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, I, I think as we always talk, be yourself. And huh? the thing is at San Diego State, I mean, I'm sorry, San Jose State, right. you had indicated that uh, to work your way through there when you, and what did you go to school for when you were up there? What, were you, what was your major? Well, again, I, uh, I had studied Criminal Justice Administration in San Diego State Calexico campus. Uh, there, I, I had, I had uh, part of my study, I, I went to Juvenile Hall, and, and uh, I was an in, not, not an intern, but a student. There was a work-study program where I had to, to deal with uh, intake and deal with custodies. Uh, and then, uh, at the same time I was working for the police department, it was paying my way. Uh, and then, when I decided to go to San Jose State, I wanted to go to criminal justice. I wanted to continue my, my, my so I, I, I resigned from Calexico. I took my retirement, cashed out my retirement, and then whatever monies I had saved, I went to San Jose State. Unfortunately, that wasn't very much money, and I ended up uh, living in a garage for one year. Um, it was uh, a real garage. I mean, the door coming down, <laughs> cold at night. Um, it wasn't insulated, but it was, uh, I've always been a romantic. Uh, uh, my parents have always thought, I was, again, when I said I'm gonna do law enforcement, they wanted me to do something else. They said, they said well, because it's public good, it helps people something that I thought would help people. Um, so you graduated from San Jose State and uh, you had indicated that uh, you are very happily married. When did you meet your wife? Uh, about 14, uh, no, actually now I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was married uh, on my 30th birthday and uh, there are, I have memory flaws. And one of them is, and I know those memory flaws, I actually married my wife the day before my birthday so I'd always remember the, the day. Uh, and I also get in trouble because I kind of joke saying my sentence is still on till 40 or 50 years there now. Uh, but no, I, I believe it was uh, 1986, 1985. Okay. And uh, you had indicated you have, uh, you and your wife have four children. I have four children. I'm very proud of them. Uh, two males and, and uh, two females. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is graduating uh, this, this semester from Channel Islands, Cal State Channel Islands. Uh, two of them are in Oxnard College, and then uh, the third one is at uh, Humboldt State University. Wow. N not many parents that could sit around and say they're putting four children through college, you know, these days. So my, my hand is out to you for doing things like that. You sound like my kids. <laughs> <laughs> they have their hand out too. Uh, but anyway, well, I'm sorry. It, it is a tough, it, it is a much, much different society you know, in economic conditions today uh, that we've ever seen in our life. And I think you were sharing that with me, uh, that this is the worst that you've seen uh, since the early 80s. Yes, uh, when I graduated from um, college, uh, my, we're, what happened was the recession of 83, 84, that was considered the worst recession before this one. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you study this recession, uh, and that was used as an example of as the worst dip. And I, I stepped out of college in that time. Uh, I could not find a job in law enforcement uh, because they weren't hiring public. The public sector was, was, was shutting down. Uh, I ended up, uh, uh, I uh, taught San Diego State one semester, uh, a lecturer in criminal justice, uh, again, criminal justice, juvenile delinquency. I, I, didn't, I wasn't comfortable with a, a three hour, one, one class, three hours a week. It was not uh, making making enough money for me in the sense I wasn't comfortable with it either. It was it was just I just wasn't ready for that. It wasn't what I wanted to do. Uh, then I was a long term substitute teacher, which got me t uh, two contracts. Uh, I was a general science teacher at a junior high, and I kind of liked it. I kind of was thinking maybe teaching. I mean, the world was in, in total chaos, and that in my mind, I, I, I may not get a job in what I wanted to do. And then uh, I taught one year at high school, and then I made a decision. I, I taught U.S. government and civics in high school, and there I said, "No, this teaching is beautiful. I, I, it's, it's you have to be really dedicated to be a teacher." And so I said, "No, I'm going to go back and look for criminal justice. I have all the education in criminal justice um, and uh, the experiences uh, there." And uh, by good fortune, 
I, I took a job with the Department of Motor Vehicles as an investigator. They hired me as an assistant, uh, which wasn't the, the DMV has, uh, that was the lowest title for that class. And again, that was the recession. And, and I was willing to come in. I didn't have that, the I didn't take the position that no, I have all this education, I should be the chief. <laughs> I came in saying, no, I'm gonna take what I can and then work my way up. And uh, unfortunately I have friends that, that took the other position and uh, they lost time. Now, mm -hmm. uh, anyways, I see that today. I see a parallel of, of that today under our recession. Okay, and now we're at a point where basically uh, you've done your work career, you've raised, uh, you know, where you have four children in college. So uh, now uh, you have decided to uh, do some of the things that your family did down in Calexico and uh, become more involved in local government. And uh, can you share with our viewers the reason that you've uh, elected at this time to uh, run for city council and what you hope to accomplish if you are elected? Well, my history has been public service. Uh, everything I've done has been public service. Uh, again, I'm not going to go over you know teaching, mm -hmm. tutoring yeah. kids, no. and all that. Uh, I retired, and uh, my first, uh, I guess, year, you know, you go through that. Well, I'm free. <laughs> I, I I should go fishing every day. I should go play golf. I should go do something. And and uh, you start looking at it and go, this is really wasteful. <laughs> I'm not used to this. I like I, I like public service and uh, I like to to help people. I like to be involved in the community, that kind of thing. And of course, just so you'll know, I was involved in the community, but not this community, not Port Wainimi. While I was in law enforcement, I was in other nonprofits. There were statewide nonprofits and. I was attracted to that to help my fellow mm. workers, my fellow, uh, another profession. I, was in, I, I still sit in the LEP. State Bar of California has the Lawyers Assistance Program. I sit as a committee member of the Oversight Committee, that, that, and uh, one of my achievements there is we created that program. I was there uh, as one of the builders, and, and uh, we created policy, we hired people, we did budget. We still do budget. Every, every time we meet, we do budget. Every quarter we meet. Um, and it's a statewide function. I have to I have to go to Los Angeles or I have to go to San Francisco to to deal uh, to have our meetings, mm -hmm. uh, and as well as doing some upkeeps. Uh, the internet's beautiful. They send me material <laughs> and I could review it, and then we do phone conferences or, or that kind of. But anyways, um, that's one function. The other function, um, I was a senior vice president of an organization called the California Statewide Law Enforcement Association, mm -hmm. and again, this organization exists for the betterment of law enforcement, the community of law enforcement, for those individuals that serve in certain roles. And, and I, the best example I can give you, a short summary, or short, uh, California Highway Patrol has its association. The California Correctional Officers has its association. Well, in California, there's groups that are too small to, to, to do any effective change. Uh, DMV investigators are sometimes are 360, Sometimes there are 200, depending on budget conditions. 200 people cannot get together and, 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 and promote. So, so, so what happened was all the little associations joined together and created the California Statewide Law Enforcement Association. And they represent the California Fish and Game Wardens, California Park Rangers, uh, R California Highway Patrol Radio Dispatchers, California Department of Justice Special Agents, uh, California DMV Investigators, California ABC investigators, and if you notice, the, the, there's others in there, mm -hmm. and uh, if you notice, there, these are all statewide people, and therefore, uh, as an officer in that organization, we had statewide, I served the community, but it was a statewide community. So, and that's what you were saying earlier, all of this experience that you've had sort of is now leading you into exactly what the city council member does in a small, co in a community like uh, Port Wainimi. This is, this is correct. It's a uh, policy budget and again it falls into my my belief uh, public safety uh, one of the main uh, the people of the community need to feel safe to shop feel safe in going to the parks going to their churches they don't want to leave and have a burglary <laughs> they want law enforcement there but law enforcement is not only uh, they want fire and they want they want the fire department uh, they want uh, uh, good streets uh, uh, some members of our community uh, the car is the second uh, most expensive item, a flat tire, 
or a, a busted a a a axle mm -hmm. through a pothole uh, is very damaging economically. So, so again, uh, uh, my one of the reasons I'm running is, is let's make those streets well. Let's take care of that. Uh, waste, uh, city government uh, removes waste uh, and, and manages the waste of, you know, keeps the neighborhoods clean, the parks clean. And then, of course, water, drinking water, um, which, by the way, is an issue in, in, in yeah. of our time. We, we have a lot of issues, certainly, <laughs> that are going to be going on, and I certainly do understand that. Sure. So, you know, in summing up, okay, first we'd like you to share with the viewers, you know, in a couple of easy words, okay, why they should be voting for you. And then at the end, if you'll tell people how they can get in contact with you, I think that it would make for a nice ending to our okay. interview. Yeah. Well, what I'm running for is to bring trust back to government. And I know how to ask questions. I know how to research issues. I know how to argue issues. I can do what a councilman can do. And one of the main pluses is I have the time to do it. I've told members, as, uh, as I campaign, I've told them, if you have an issue with government, I will personally come to your house and I will uh, help you make your case to council or I will make the case to council or I will make the case to government uh, for you. Uh, my experience in the past was you always need a witness. If you're going to take action, you need witnesses. And this is what I would do. I, I have the time to do that. I have the ability to do that. Um, this would bring trust back to government. Uh, there would, I believe this would work and uh, that's why I'm running. And uh, if you could share your email address, where yes. that is where you'd like people to get in contact with you. Yes, uh, my email is elect period Carrillo 2012 at gmail.com. Well, Richard, well, we want you. to thank you so much for coming to our studio today. And we hope all our viewers get a little better understanding of who you are. Well, thank you, sir. And thank you. Thank you for the time.